for engineering students. The topic for today's session is Threat Spectrum Communication of Digital Communication. The session is conducted for sister semester students of electronics and communication engineering. The session will be handled by Mr. Nandan S, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, LBS Institute of Technology for Women, Toronto. He has more than eight years of experience in a career. He completed his BTEC from Kerala University and MTech in Telecommunication at National Institute of Technology, Calicut. Previously, he worked with Q-Burst Technologies, Trandrum, Mar Basilius College, Trandrum, and LBS College of Engineering, Kasaragod. His research area of interest include wireless communication, 3G, 4G mobile communication, cognitive radio, and MIMO, OFDM systems for communication. He has also done funded projects in embedded systems and robotics for Center for Disabilities, Government of Kerala. He has more than 20 publications in international and national journals and conferences. He is also active in various international professional organizations. He is currently the chair of Student Activities Committee of IEEE Kerala section and secretary of Internet Society in the Archivantrum chapter. On behalf of SAC, sir, I welcome you to the session. To, to the participants, the total duration of the session is one hour. The session comprises of two halves each. 20 minutes of lecturing and 10 minutes for Q&A. The students can ask their questions in the Q&A box. Sir, once again, welcome to the online class. You may please proceed with the session. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So, uh, hi all. Uh, today we will have uh, I mean, a session, uh, I mean, a brief discussion about a spread spectrum communication system, which uh, is basically the topic under the sixth module of digital communication of ASICS electronics and communication engineering. All right. So, we will uh, try to uh, give a brief uh, uh, concept or outline of what basically is spread spectrum communication and uh, the fundamental concepts of that and if time permits we will uh, we will we will discuss the mathematical model of that the mathematical analysis of some of the parameters of spread spectrum communication system so let us formally start so here is the outline of the program of this this particular uh, session so uh, we will be discussing spread spectrum communication fundamentals the basic concepts then uh, we will deal with some of the parameters then uh, we will be discussing the different types uh, of spread spectrum communication. One is direct sequence spread spectrum, and the second one is frequency hope spread spectrum. Then uh, you know, we will we will check if time permits. We will we will discuss the model for analysis, some mathematical analysis of uh, some of the parameter processing. Okay. Now uh, let me uh, start with uh, some some basic concepts, and I request you know the students are requested to have some prerequisites of some of the digital modulation schemes that we normally use in uh, communication, digital communication systems. Normally, uh, we, uh, no, uh, we have some fundamental modulation techniques like BPSK, QPSK and all. So uh, I request students to have some prerequisites of this uh, to well understand the concepts of uh, respect. Okay, anyway, uh, I mean, uh, you might have studied in a communication system uh, uh, two primary resources that we are using in a communication system is nothing but bandwidth as well as power okay so these two are uh, uh, some you know uh, i should say specifically these two are uh, the major concerns while we are designing a, a digital communication system so these are the two primary communication resources we always try to limit this bandwidth as minimum as possible as well as we will try to limit the transmit power as minimum as possible all right so these two are some of the primary communication resources that we are normally concerned about all right now we use these two resources communication resources with utmost care with utmost care right so uh, i mean uh, we try to reduce this bandwidth as minimum as possible as well as the tran transmission power any communication system you take we will try to reduce the uh, the the transmission power of the communication system as minimum as possible so these two are the primary concerns in it normally in a digital communication system but there are some situations 
where we sacrifice the efficient utilization of these two resources we we will we will do uh, no we will we will have some adjustments in this we will sacrifice either bandwidth or power in some design of objectives to get some objectives all right so one such example is a secure communication system now what do you mean secure communication system a secure communication system means you want to transmit data securely secretly through a communication channel you don't want your data to be uh, i mean uh, detected by an unintended user in the channel you want to transmit the data with maximum security from the transmitter side to the receiver side where if security for example military applications where security of the system security of the transmitted signal is of utmost importance rather than the transmit power or the bandwidth so there are some situations as i told there are some situations where we will sacrifice this efficient utilization of these two resources and a very good example for that is a secure communication system all right so so here in a secure communication system my design objective is noise blocking right i don't want anyone to listen to data what i am transmitting through the channel i don't want anyone to listen to my data i want to send it uh, secretly securely to the receiver end that's my design objective basically in a secure communication system there comes the significance of spread spectrum techniques so there comes the significance of spread spectrum techniques all right so now let us discuss what are the different spectrum techniques what is the fundamental concept or concept of this spread spectrum uh, i mean communication system all right so my primary advantage is to have the ability to reject any kind of interference interference can be either intentional or unintentional intentional means purposefully a jammer will be sitting in the channel who is trying to take my detect we call it as is drop right so that is intentional and in some cases it may be in non unintentional also so anyway whether it is in unintentional i don't want my data to be detected by an intermediate i mean a receiver unintended authorized receiver that's my primary uh, uh, objective and that is a primary advantage of a uh, secure communication system or i should say a spread spectrum technique so using this spread spectrum technique we are basically getting some advantage of security of the system by compromising so called previous uh, i mean resources bandwidth and some extent power all right so now let us define a spread spectrum system spread spectrum system is a means of transmission of data data has information right data will carry information so it it is it is actually a method of transmission in which the data is spread it over a wider range of frequencies right actual data will be a very narrow band signal normally we call it as a base band signal significant low frequency components right so actual data will be a very narrow band signal now i will spread that narrow band signal to a wider band so we spread the narrow band signal to a wider band. this is what we are doing in spread spectrum communication we are spreading from the name itself it is very clear we are spreading spectrum we are spreading the spectrum before transmitting the data so before transmitting the data we spread the spectrum of the data we will transmit this is a fundamental spread spectrum so spread spectrum i can say this is a it is a mean transmission a method of transmission in which data is spread over a wider range of frequencies actual data is narrow band now i will spread it over a wider range of frequencies uh, uh wider range of frequencies than what is actually required all right now for a given transmit power what i am doing in spread spectrum i am broadening the i am spreading the spectrum all right so for a given transmit power broader the spectrum means the signal power is less the signal power is seems less so for an unintended user for an authorized user the detection or the interception is it seems to be difficult why because i am spreading the entire power over this wide range of frequencies 
all right so this is the fundamental idea behind a stellar spectrum so with some diagrams you will be you will come to know a little bit more clear about the fundamental concepts of a stellar spectrum system all right now the question is how you will spread the spectrum how the spectrum is spread the spectrum is spread by means of a code i'm using a code all right i'm using a code and this code Uh, completely independent of the data sequence there is no relation between this data sequence and uh, i mean the, the code that we are using okay so the question is how you will spread the data all right how you will spread the data by means of a so called pseudo noise code what is pseudo noise code you might have studied some pseudo noise sequences right we will discuss in this you know later in the upcoming modules we will be discussing uh, pseudo noise sequence its param its properties and all so pseudo noise sequence means it seems like noise but it is not actually noise See, it, it is following a particular pattern. It seems like noise, but it's not actually noise. So, by using zero noise sequences, I will spread my data, and there is no relation between this code and actual data. All right, this is what I am doing. All right. So now, now you listen carefully. You can see here what I am doing is I am using a, a zero random code. I am using a zero random code. to spread the signal this is the bandwidth or the spectrum i should say this is a spectrum of your actual signal the figure shows this one this one shows the spectrum of your actual signal which is a narrow band one this is a bandwidth right bandwidth is very less now what i am doing is using this pseudo random code i will spread the signal spread this bandwidth to a wider spectrum this is what you are transmitting so here the bandwidth is very high and what i am doing at the receiver side coming to the receiver side i will de spread using the same code that i am using at the receiver whatever code i am using at the transmitter whatever code i am using at the transmitter i will use the same code to get my signal back data back from the spread signal all right i hope the concept is clear so i have a narrow band signal which is having a very less bandwidth now i will spread this bandwidth with the help of so called a pseudo random code and with the help of this pseudo noise code i will spread the spectrum all right so the overall bandwidth seems to be very high and the total power is now spread it over this this wider bandwidth region so this is a spreading thing and now i will use the same pn sequence code at the receiver to de spread to get back your actual data this is a concept all right now now i am reiterating in a spread spectrum system the transmitted signal occupies a much larger bandwidth than required all right so i am reiterating in a spread spectrum system the transmitted signal occurs occupies a much larger bandwidth than what is actually required all right now the question is how do you widen the bandwidth of data signal that is a question all right normally normally the question will arise how we can widen this bandwidth of the signal i told you right how how it is possible with the help of something called a code is pseudo random code now let us see how we can spread the spectrum of your actual data signal with the help of this code all right so how will you do this widening there comes block diagram of a spectral spectrum system so we are having a data encoder right we are having a data encoder which will encode the data right some data you are coming which will take care of uh, i mean uh, the source part uh, and all so some data which is coming from the uh, from from the from the source which will be encoded by the data encoder now that encoded data is now given to a spectral spectrum modulator right and what is what, what we are taking uh, at the input of this spectrum modulator we have the data as well as the pseudo noise code generator so we have a pseudo noise code generator output of this pseudo noise code generator is called a spreading code spreading code normally we call it as a spreading code it is which is nothing but so called the code signal normally we call it as a code signal all right we call it as a pseudo random code signal or a pseudo noise code signal all right now i will use these two and i will spread this data with the help of this pseudo noise code and they will transmit to it through the channel right so what is here what you are getting here in this particular portion is nothing but this spread spectrum system signal sorry 
spread spectrum signal all right so this data is having the data here is having a very narrow bandwidth after spreading here coming to here in the channel side the bandwidth of the overall signal increases or i should say spreading will happen so that the that that signal which is passing through the channel i call it as the spread spectrum signal all right now coming to the receiver side i will use the same spread spectrum demodulator where i mean i will use the same code signal the whatever code i am using at the transmitter i will use the same code at the receiver to do the exactly reverse process process of what i have done at the transmitter side okay and once if you despread that process is called despreading once if I despread the data, I, then I will decode it to get the actual data output. And please remember, I haven't mentioned anything about the channel noise here. Obviously, by passing through a channel, some, some, some sort of noise will be there. All right. So uh, finally, after despreading, you will get your data back. I hope it is clear. Now, here goes a spread spectral communication, the whole concept. What is the spreading actually? See, here I have mentioned spreading, right? The spread spectral modulator. Here goes. This is simply a multiplier. See this, see the figure, you can, you can see very well in the figure, we actually have, we actually have, this is your input data, D of T, D of T or by B of T, whatever, right? Let it be, I represent it as D of T, which is the data signal, which has the information, which is a very narrow band signal, bandwidth is quite less. Now I am simply multiplying with the code signal C of T, C of T is my code signal. I am multiplying this C of T with my D of T. And that spear product or multiplication is nothing but the spreading thing. We call, you know, spreading is actually simply taking the product of an actual input signal with your code. So spreading is just product of taking the product of input data signal with the code. So output of this product is, you know, pro this uh, product modulator is nothing but uh, a transmitted spread spectrum signal S of T. All right, which, which will be having a spreaded spectrum. You can see here, here the bandwidth is very less. Now here coming here, once if you multiply with a code, the bandwidth spread. If you multiply with a code, the bandwidth of the data signal will spread. Now, at the receiver, you are getting R of T, right? You are getting this that uh, spectrum signal at the receiver. Now what I am doing, I am multiplying this code signal I am multiplying with the same code signal that I am using at the transmitter, right? To get back your Z of T, which is again the spreaded version. The spreaded version is exactly the detail of what I have transmitted at the transmitter side. All right. So this is the general, I mean, uh, uh, the the whole idea of uh, of a spread spectrum communication system. So this, we are simply taking the product. All right. Now, uh, you know, once if you if you closely observe this particular thing, then the spread spectrum fundamental concept will be very much clear. All right. So you please observe this. You please observe this. In the time domain, I, I, I have I have shown here the time domain approach. All right. So assume that this is my data. This is my data. So my data is say one one here and zero here. Okay. All right. So uh, what I am having here is this is my data. All right. This is my data. So my data is having suppose a one and a zero which is represented in the polar form. So one is represented as plus one and zero is represented as minus one, polar form, normal polar form, right? So one is represented as plus A and zero is represented as minus A, right? So what is the time period of my data signal TB? This is one bit, one bit that I am transmitting, one bit of my information. What is the time, my time period? TB, TB is my time period, all right? So this is my data signal. Now what I am doing is I am having a code. Here is a code, see here, with inside the table, you can see the code. My code is having here 0011101 is my code here. All right. And uh, uh, see uh, what is the length of this code? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 is the length. I'm having a code having, I, I, I'm having a code with seven, 7 chips, so called chips. Right. I call it as a chip. All right. So my code length is actually 7. I call it, I represent with capital N, capital N. What is capital N here? Seven. What is capital N? Capital N is the number of chips in one particular code. So I have here 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 7. 7 is the link. So my capital N is 7. Now I will represent this code again in the polar form. So 0 is represented as minus 1. 
one is represented as one. All right, and the very simple polar form: zero represented as minus one, and one represented as plus one. Okay, so this is a polar form a representation of my code sequence. Now, see, see, one bit of my data which is having TB duration is multiplied with this code. See, this is my code. See here zero, here zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, which is the code. Or I should say minus one, minus one, 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 one minus one, one. This is the code. So this is the seven length code. Right? This is having length seven. Capital N is equal to seven. All right. So one bit of my actual data is multiplied with this particular code which is in the polar form what you will get one multiplied with so see here please observe the thing what is the period time duration of this code tc i represent as tc for data it is tb tb is the bit duration tc is the chip duration i call it as chip duration c represents chip or code maybe okay so tc is the chip duration this is the duration of so as compared to your data your code signal is having a lesser time period all right that is a whole concept as compared to your data signal which is having a time period of tb my code signal my code signal now is having a duration time period of tc tc is very small compared to tb all right and can you tell me what is tb tb is equal to n times tc why because i am having n number of chips some sequences so n times tc is tb all right so if, if i multiply these two if i multiply these two then what i am getting is minus one multiply with one you'll be having here see here one multiply with minus one minus one again minus one multiply with one minus one all right so you are multiplying the data signal with this spreading code you are multiplying this particular data signal with this spreading code so one multiplied with one you can see here one 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 so product of these two product of first two will be this so the third figure here the third figure here the third product signal m of t is your spread spectrum system signal i should say all right signal so this is a spread spectrum signal so in a nutshell I can tell you that each bit of your data which is having duration TB is multiplied with a code sequence of having length N and period TC and TC is very small and I should say TC into N is TB. N times TC is your TB. TB is your bit duration. All right. So you are just multiplying this process is fundamentally we call it as the spread spectrum technique so normally normally so i, I will give you i will give you uh, some time for questions and before that one more one more point i have to mention that normally here students some of the students may get and they may get, may get some questions regarding uh, how the bandwidth will spread here yes the bandwidth will spread if you multiply with the code see here in the time domain, see, you might be you know you might have studied this in the time domain. You, if you have a rectangular signal in the time domain, what is the frequency response of this? You take Fourier transform of a rectangular signal, what you will get? You will get a single function, single sing, sing pulse in the frequency domain. So if I have a rectangular pulse of duration capital T, if I take the Fourier transform of that in the frequency domain, if I plot the spectrum of the signal. The main lobe, main lobe of that of, of that sing function will be going up to say one by t. You neglect about the remaining side lobes. You consider only the main lobe. So what is this particular point? First 0 0.1 by t. So if t is the pulse duration here, one by t is the maximum frequency component there. All right. So I can say if one millisecond is the time duration of my rectangular pulse, then one by one millisecond. 1 by t is 1 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz is the bandwidth of this particular bandwidth consumed. The maximum bandwidth consumed is 1 kilohertz. 1 by t. So if you spread that, what is the time period of the spreaded signal? Time period of spreaded signal is Tc. Right? Tc is very small. Tc is very small. 
This is TB, this is TC. Second figure shows TC, this is TC. One chip duration. So what will be the bandwidth? So coming from one millisecond to one microsecond here, if I reduce the time period of the signal, what happens that it will spread. One by one microsecond will be one megahertz. So what will be the bandwidth? Bandwidth become one megahertz. All right. So this is the fundamental concept. If if the pulse width of the signal reduces in the frequency domain, the spectrum will spread basically. So what the what is a what will be the bandwidth of this uh, of this particular thing? Uh, uh, the second signal which is having one microsecond duration, it will be one megahertz. All right. So basically, compared to the the upper one, the lower one is having a higher bandwidth. So I can say spreaded signal is having a higher bandwidth. Why? Because the spreaded signal period is actually TC. TC is, is nothing but the chip duration of your code. All right. So this is the fundamental concept of a spread spectrum system. Okay. So this is a fundamental concept. Now, uh, if there are any questions, then probably we can take that. Uh, what, is, uh, what are the applications of spread, uh, spread spectrum? Okay. See, uh, one of the fundamental you know, uh, uh, applications, again, uh, we have to mention some more parameters to well understand the applications of a spectrum system that we will come towards the end of it. But to be very simple, I can say that, uh, I mean, uh, what basically uh, we, we started this topic by, by, by saying that, you know, we will compromise two things, one bandwidth and the other is power to get security, right? So secure communication system is one fundamental application of the secure, of this uh, spread spectrum spectrum communication system. See, for example, if you are using some military applications and all, where uh, we will be, uh, I mean, uh, we will use this spread spectrum system where bandwidth is not a concern, but security of the system is concerned. So what are the applications where we are having security as our design objective? There we can use a spread spectrum system. That is one thing. And we have few more applications uh, uh, applications for this spread spectrum system. And you can see this particular method using uh, in a lot of applications in real time, real world. But for that, you need to understand some more parameters that we have to discuss uh, towards the end. So after discussing those parameters, I will list out the remaining applications. The first one, I can say the major one from this particular uh, uh, you know, fundamental idea or that you have received, it is nothing but a secure communication system. For example, some military application where you need to send your data securely to the receiver. And the remaining set we will, uh, we will address towards the end right? because we, you need some more parameters to be uh, given. All right. Uh, what is the main advantage of spread spectrum uh, communication? Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, th that's what I have mentioned. No, the main advantage of this spread spectrum system is just, uh, 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 you know, the security that we have, that we are getting from this spread spectrum system. And in addition to that, you know, we are consuming, if bandwidth is not at all a problem, we are consuming a lot of bandwidth, right? So we are having a, we are, we are spreading it off. Obviously, bandwidth is a very, very, you know, uh, for, for, uh, from a service provider point of view, ba bandwidth is, is obviously a very, very uh, important point of concern. But overall, looking from bandwidth perspective, I am getting a better bandwidth. Right, I am getting a better bandwidth for the transmission of my data. That is well and good, obviously. That is an advantage. But again, from a service provider point of view, that is not an advantage. Why? Because you have, we will try to reduce the bandwidth as maximum as possible. But uh, I should say, from this knowledge so far, what we have discussed, the most important uh, advantage is nothing but we can have a very uh, secure uh, transmission of digital data. Uh, why? Because nobody can uh, uh, can uh, send a jamming signal to my data. I, I will. I will. You will. It will be very clear if I explain the next slide. Nobody can send a jamming signal to my signal. But even though we send a jamming signal to my signal, nothing will happen at the receiver side if I despread effect of that we will become nullified. That we will discuss in the upcoming slides. So secure communication is one of the most important advantage of this particular thing. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, the question is, in the example of spectrum you mentioned, uh, you used the code, the polar form plus one and minus one. And you yes. said we use the same code in the decoder. Is yeah. the code for the decoder same of encoder for every code? Yes, I yeah, know. Um, whatever code you are using at the transmitter, same code you have to use at the receiver side for despreading. You cannot use another code. 
that is advantage you know uh, uh, you know towards in the next module we will be studying cdma systems where one code is assigned for a user if the receiver is having that particular code then you will be able to decode the data retrieve or despread the data otherwise it's not possible so it is mandatory that whatever code you are using at the transmitter the same thing we have to use at the receiver that is mandatory next question is the type yeah. of code used has any significance Yes, obviously the type of code. Yeah, uh, I mean in the next session we will discuss the different types of code. The types of code used will have, uh, you know, will be significantly affecting the performance of the system. Okay, so uh, I mean uh, the type of code uh, we we normally go for something called M sequence, maximal length sequences, gold codes, uh, Walsh Hadamard sequences. A lot of co uh, codes that we will be using, and depending upon the autocorrelation and cross correlation properties of these codes. So type of codes actually it matters. Uh, we different codes are having different autocorrelation and cross correlation properties. So we will use our code with better autocorrelation cross correlation properties that we will discuss in you know upcoming session will be on the different types of codes. In our topic, in our syllabus, we will be discussing only two codes. One is maximum M sequence, maximal length sequence, and the second one is uh, I mean gold sequence. These two will we will be discussing in our syllabus. But we have some more uh, uh, good codes like uh, Walsh Hadamard sequence. And a lot of our other codes are available, which is having better correlation properties. So, based on the correlation properties of the code, we will select the code. So, it matters actually. Yes. Thank you, sir. We can proceed with the uh, lecture. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? You feel free to contact through uh, any other medium. No problem. Okay. Like so. Now coming to a frequency domain approach. So I hope my PPT is visible, right? Okay. Fine. All right. So now uh, let us let us discuss the frequency domain approach. What we have previously mentioned is a time domain approach, where we will multiply your uh, your uh, your signal in the time domain with uh, your code, which is which is shown in the time domain. Now what happens in the frequency domain? This is your baseband signal. Baseband signal means your low frequency signal or i should say your your messy signal a signal with significant low frequency components so this baseband signal after multiplication with the code we now know very well that it will spread the spectrum the spectrum is spread at something like this all right now now coming to, come come to the the bottom figure see here this one is the desired signal you can see the desired signal desired signal is your spread spectrum signal okay this is what you are transmitting to that an unintended user is adding some interference signal so called a jamming signal okay so to that desired signal an unintended user is adding uh, an interference signal or a jamming signal now what happens at the receiver after a despreading process what i am doing is the actual desired spec spectrum signal if multiplied with the same code right if multiply with the same code you will get back your actual data so right you can see here i, I will show in the previous diagram right what, what will happen this is spreading right i what i have mentioned here is spreading what will happen at the d at the d spreading part you once if you d spread what will happen so i will show here what will happen at the d spread see here this is your spread spectrum signal right and what i what you are doing at the receiver side at the receiver side you are multiplying this product signal with the same code with the same code your code is here this is your code you can see the code this is your code this is your code signal so at the receiver side you are multiplying at the d spreading part you are multiplying this signal with the same code so see what happens minus one multiplied with minus one it is one here also minus one multiplied with minus one 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 multiply with one one so whatever it is you are multiplying the same sequence right this one with this one right you can see the third figure and for the, the middle one and the bottom one multiplication of these two will give you one always so you are getting back your data this is be spreading you are getting back your data all right similarly what happens the other part here minus one multiply with one minus one similarly minus one multiply with one again minus one whatever multiplication you do this part minus plus one multiplied with the bottom minus one you will get minus one so this multiplication the second the right part the second bit this multiplication will give you minus one which is your actual data so that means that means if you multiply your spreading your spread spectrum signal with the same spreading code you will get back your data signal this is the fundamental you know uh, the concept that this is what we are utilizing 
this this idea is what we are utilizing at the uh, uh, at the receiver part while we spread all right now see see here what happens if i uh, de spread you can very well see here that after de spreading you will get back your desired signal this is your actual data which is your narrow band signal the previous one the what you have transmitted and the in what happens to the interference signal interference signal will get will, uh, will get spread out why because interfering signal the jammer is a narrow band signal the jammer he has no idea that i am i'm having a wider spectrum so jammer will send that narrow narrow band jamming signal so at the receiver side at the at the, at the you know at the d when once if i do de spreading process i am multiplying my spread spectrum signal as well as this jamming signal with the same code so what happens if i multiply jamming signal with the code jamming signal will spread this is shown here so interfering signal will spread the spectrum so the the noise component coming from this interfering signal or the jamming signal will be very less so i can simply use a filter this part this with a narrow band filter to get the data back right nothing will happen and in that narrow band part since the jamming signal is spread that since the jamming signal is spread that the noise power from the from this jamming signal will be very small this is shown here in the uh, i mean uh, the shaded portion all right so that is advantage jamming signal can do nothing with my actual transmission jamming signal can no way affect my actual transmission this is the main advantage of a spread spectrum communication system all right so this is a whole idea now sorry <clears throat> now let me introduce a parameter called processing gate okay so this is one parameter i will introduce and later in probably i am not sure whether we will be able to derive that today but probably in the next session we will be able to derive an expression for this processing gate then you will understand the fundamental concept of what a processing gate is all right so for the time being i will give you the definition and fundamental idea of what is processing gate okay processing gate is the gain in snr right it is whatever gain you are obtaining in the s for you know whatever uh, uh, snr gain you are obtaining by using this spectrum uh, modulation technique that is actually represented by processing gain also or i should say processing gain indicates snr gain gain in snr okay and what is snr gain you observe the receiver part come to the receiver part you will get some signal at the output of receiver and you will you will be giving something to the input of receiver you check the snr at the input of receiver you check the snr at the output of receiver take the ratio snr at the output divided by snr at the input you always want that to be maximum right always we want snr to be maximum right always we want snr at the output to be maximum as maximum as possible all right so this ratio of snr at the output of the of the receiver system divided by snr at the input that ratio is called the processing gain okay or i can i can give one more definition for this it is actually in very simple terms it is actually the spreaded bandwidth divided by that signal bandwidth or in the previous figure this is you can see the spreaded bandwidth here right spreaded bandwidth which is very very large this is a spreaded bandwidth all right you can see and that divided by that uh, uh, signal i mean uh, signal bandwidth which is a very narrow bandwidth so that ratio spreaded bandwidth divided by signal bandwidth is called a processing gain all right and i should say this processing gain is an approximate measure of the interference rejection capacity of my spread spectrum system okay so if i know the processing gain i i can say some uh, some observations about the interference rejection capacity of the system all right so this is an approximate measure of the interference uh, rejection capacity or i should say to be very specific this is this is the gain in snr obtained by using a spread spectrum modulation technique all right and uh, no it's it's very simple right what is processing gain spreaded bandwidth divided by actual signal bandwidth or that is that is in the frequency domain that is in the frequency domain or you come to the previous one what it will be this is actually tb divided by tc right that is a spreading factor right 
spreading spreading factor in the time domain will be tb which is now reduced to tc all right so what is the factor n so i can say here n as the processing gain or i should say tb by tc you can see in the screen tb the bit duration that the time period of the bit of your data signal divided by time duration of your code signal that ratio is the processing gain of the system all right so we have defined processing gain in two aspects one is a frequency domain it is i, I can say it is a product bandwidth divided by actual signal bandwidth and in the time domain i can say it is tb uh, bit duration of your data actual data divided by bit duration of your chip tb by tc or i should say n is the processing gain all right I hope you can see this P, P, PG processing gain is equal to TB by TC, right? Or I can write this as 1 by TC divided by 1 by TB. I can rearrange this. Simply I am rearranging. All right. Then what is 1 by TC? 1 by TC is, it is a chip rate, number of chips per second. All right. It is a number of chips per second. See, for example, your TC is, see, for example, um, I should say, suppose, assume, you, you visualize, assume, your TC is 0.5. Uh, seconds so 0.5 seconds for the time being a random example not exactly not having any practical relevance but still you take 0.5 seconds 1 by 0.5 second will be 2 that means in one second you have two chips all right in one second you have two chips so if your tc is 0.5 seconds 1 by tc is 1 by 0.5 1 by 0.5 is 2 that means you have two chips per second i call it as a chip rate so chip rate is actually the number of chips that we are having per second per second similarly 1 by tb will be number of bits per second that is the bit rate so another definition for processing gain is chip rate divided by bit rate i hope it is very clear all right so rc by rb this is this is uh, i mean the definition for processing gain now quickly we will move to the different types of a spread spectrum. Normally, we deal with two different types of spread spectrum systems. Right? So we have two different types. The first one is direct sequence spread spectrum or DSSS, direct sequence spread spectrum. And the second one is frequency hoping spread spectrum, FHSS, frequency hoping spread spectrum. All right. Now, so let us first discuss the first one, which is a direct sequence spread spectrum. All right nothing to worry what we have discussed so far is actually the fundamental principle of a direct sequence perspective what we have discussed so far so far what we have discussed is nothing but multiplication or product of your message signal with your carrier you are taking the product of message and data and carrier i mean carrier in the sense code i'm sorry code it's not carrier it's a code so you are taking the product of data and code Right. This, this is the same file, the concept behind uh, the direct sequence per spectrum system. Okay. This is DSSS only. Frequency hope is having some difference. We will discuss in uh, next session probably. Okay. Now, now we are just multiplying data, which is a narrow band signal with a code. Right. This is baseband. This is the baseband. All our discussions, this product, everything is in the baseband. But now come to, see for example, a satellite communication scenario where you will be using a bandpass channel, a high frequency channel, all right. In a high frequency ca channel, can you do this baseband multiplication? It's not possible. You have to always go for a high frequency carrier. You might have discussed, you might have studied our digital bandpass modulation techniques. About the digital modulation bandpass modulation techniques, some of them are. BPSK binary phase shift keying, QPSK quadrature phase shift keying, APSK or whatever advanced schemes. So coming to a bandpass channel, for example, a satellite communication channel or any any channel where mobile communication channel, whatever, any channel where we are using a high frequency, where where we need a high frequency carrier right so previously in the previous slides what we have discussed is simply the baseband transmission now if you are discussing if you need to analyze over a band pass channel or a high frequency channel then obviously you have to incorporate what coherent psk modulation schemes binary phase shift key modulation schemes into both transmitter as well as receiver right and combine these two you will get 
DSSS, direct sequence per spectrum. Okay, I will, I will reiterate, in a direct sequence per spectrum, I'm having spreading product of message data and code plus a binary phase shift key, some band pass community modulation technique, normally binary phase shift key or QPS key. So this pro, uh, spreading plus a high band pass modulation, uh, I mean technique combination of these two is nothing but. You can see uh, this in, in the figure. So I have two stages in a data sequence per spectrum system. One is a product modulator and the second is a BPSK modulator or binary phase, phase shift key modulator. You can see here. Okay, so one more thing is coming into picture in the DSSS thing, which is nothing but why? Because this is a band pass channel. Previously, what we have discussed is a baseband channel. Now this is, we are coming to a band pass channel where we need a carrier. We need a high frequency carrier for transmission. No other options. All right. So here, here so B of T uh, data sequence multiplied with the code. Then you give it to you can see you give it to a binary PSK modulator and output of this is X of T. You can observe in figure. You can look at the screen. You can see X of T. What is X of T here? Think what is X of T here? X of T is BPSK modulated version of your spreaded signal, right? It is BPSK modulated spreaded data signal. That is direct sequence spread spectrum, right? That is X of T. All right. Now coming to the receiver, you will use the same PN code well, because you know there is no other option. You have to use the same code otherwise. Uh, you will never get back your message. So you have to use the same carrier. I mean, you have to use the same uh, PN sequence or code at the receiver to multiply, then give it to a detector, coherent BPSK detector, where you need the same carrier. You might have studied, you know, BPSK and all you might have studied. What we are you doing in BPSK for general information? This is what we are doing in BPSK. Quickly, I will tell you, suppose I have a data zero and one. How will how I will BPSK modulate that? Zero will be represented as a in its polar form, say minus one, and one will be represented in its polar form, say one, say plus one and minus one. Now, corresponding to zero, its polar form is minus one. What I am transmitting is minus a cos two pi FCT. I am transmitting a minus a cos two pi FCT, a cos and high frequency carrier. Corresponding to one, what I am transmitting is A cos 2 pi FCT. All right. So in BPSK, what you are transmitting? In BPSK, either you are transmitting A cos 2 pi FCT corresponding to one or minus A cos 2 pi FCT corresponding to zero or polar minus one. All right. Which is very well shown here in this particular diagram. Okay. And what is required at the receiver? At the receiver, what is having at the BPSK receiver? At the BPSK receiver, you will multiply with the same carrier. Your carrier is A cos 2 pi Your carrier is, you have only one carrier, A cos 2 pi city. That A cos 2 pi city, you, you will transmit as A cos 2 pi if it, your data is one. Or you will transmit as minus A cos 2 pi city if your data is zero. All right. Now at the receiver, at the receiver side, what you are doing is you will multiply with the same carrier then integrate, pass it through low pass filter mode. Okay, we call it as a correlator, correlator receiver. Okay, so you will use this correlator receiver for detecting this BPSA signal back. This is what it is shown here, a coherent detector. So there you need a local carrier. All right, so this is a direct sequence spread spectrum modulation technique. All right, so you can see the phase change, either A or minus A. All right, so I, I, will, I will quickly, I will quickly, uh, um, I mean, highlight it here. You can see corresponding to minus one, you are transmitting minus A C cos two pi FCT. All right. And corresponding to one, you are transmitting plus A C cos two pi FCT. Again, minus one, you are transmitting minus A C. This is normal BBSK. Right. So this is uh, a direct sequence per spectrum signal. Okay. Uh, now uh, let us let us uh, if time permits, we will quickly we will at least do the initial portion of this. We will we, we will move to a mathematical model for analysis of this spread spectrum system okay so direct sequence per spectrum i hope the block diagram is clear in block diagram you have two parts one is a product modulator and the second one is nothing but uh, i mean a coherent bpsk modulator okay these two are there in dsss system now let us have a mathematical analysis of this 
Anyway, I may not be able to complete the entire mathematical model of this, but analysis of this, but I will give you a whole idea. What we are trying to do is, we will observe, we will, we will use the mathematical expressions to represent this direct sequence per spectrum system. From there, gradually we will uh, analyze what is the jamming signal, what is the nature of jamming signal. Is it random? If so, what is the mean? What is the variance? Everything we will understand. And finally, we will derive an expression for processing gain. First, processing gain. I mean, SNR are the output, SNR are the input. All these things we will find. And we will derive an expression for processing gain. And the last portion will be derivation of its probability of error. Right. Anyway, noise is there. Some, some error chance will be there because of the noise. So we have to derive an expression for the probability of error. These things we will obviously discuss in the next session. But at least we can start quickly in this initial, at least, at least this model we can complete today. All right. So here in, uh, in this particular thing, you can see the block diagram, which is slightly rearranged. So previously, initial portion was um, in, uh, spreading followed by product modulator but i have interchanged that nothing will happen no anyway you keep if you keep one as stationary other one will be anyway linear so i can interchange nothing will happen so i have here first i mentioned bpsk modulator then followed by p encoder i'm simply swapping that order that's it so b, b of t is your data signal which is given to a binary psk modulator where you are having a carrier then after modulation you are having something called s of t S of T is actually your transmitted signal. You multiply with your code C of T, you will get X of T. What is X of T? X of T is, listen carefully, X of T is your spread, spread, spread it, spread it, BPSK modulated signal. X of T is spread it, BPSK modulated signal or BPSK modulated spread it signal. Now it is passing through a channel where I have the jamming, unintended noise, which is J of T. And coming to the receiver, we have Y of T. And uh, this Y of T, uh, first you are doing is the, exactly the reverse process. You are multiplying with the same carrier C of T. And the product I represent as U of T, which is, what is U of T? U of T is after despreading. After despreading, what you will get? Your BPSK signal. So what is next step? BPSK demodulator. That is coherent detected here, where you will you need the local carrier. And you will have the estimate of B of T. All right. So this is uh, this is our a fundamental uh, direct sequence spread spectral system. All right. Where y of t is x of t plus g of t. All right. Y of t is x of t plus g of t. Then and what is this x of t here? X of t is s of t into c of t. Right. It is very clear here. S of t into c of t. That is written here. S of t into c of t plus your jamming noise g of t. Right. So I can say what is u? u is actually y into c received one multiplied with the same code so u of t is y of t into c of t so y of t can be written in terms of s of t into c of t no it is self-explanatory from the figure itself you can understand and write s of t into c of t plus g of t the whole into code the same code of the receiver all right and bringing this back uh, we have s of t is equal to uh, i mean this is s of t into or u of t is equal to s of t into c square t plus g of t into c of t okay so uh, uh, after this this uh, coming to this particular we will we will finish we will stop for today but before that one point i have to mention here what the c square t what is c square c square is actually the square of your code sequence square of your code sequence what is your code sequence you can see here See here your code sequence. This is your code sequence. What you take the square of code sequence minus one square one in the polar form. You take square polar form. You take square c square. You will get one always one. So c square of t will be one. C square of t is always. One. I hope it is very clear. Polar form. You take you take square of that. It will be always one. All right. So that is the reason why you have mentioned here c square t is equal to one. That is the reason I have mentioned here the c square. The, you can see here c square t is equal to 1. So your u of t becomes s of t plus g of t into c of t. And what is s of t? What is s of t? s of t is actually your, it is after despreading, right? You have already multiplied with your code. So it is despreaded. 
So after displaying, what you will get? You will get your BPSK signal. So it is BPSK signal plus spreaded version of your interference. You have some jamming signal, right? So jamming signal itself will spread during our actual despreading. During our actual despreading, the the jamming signal will spread. All right. So uh, I am I am getting U of T. U of T here. This U of T is is having two components. The first component is a binary PSK signal, and the second component is a spreaded interference. The interference will spread. Okay. So uh, I mean I think we can take if any questions are there. Uh, we can take a couple of questions. Otherwise, no. Uh, I mean, shall we proceed or? Uh, sir, I will <laughs> okay, okay, then we will take some questions. Yeah, all right. Uh, as we are stretching the signal, even yeah. though we use the same code as transmitter and receiver, would yes. there be an error due to this? There will not be any error because of this. Why? Because, see, observe this figure, this particular figure. I will show here. See? Uh, I mean, I, I, I hope it is visible. Some kind of error will be there if channel is introducing some noise. Obviously, that that we have to take care. If channel is introducing some some error will be there. That towards the you know in the next session we will derive an expression for the probability of error. That that is one part. If channel is introducing some noise, error definitely will be there. Otherwise, if channel is not introducing any kind of noise, then see here. This is the code. This is the actual spreaded sequence. You are uh, at the despreading part. You are multiplying your product signal with the same code, right? You multiply these two minus one, multiply it by minus one. You will get one. Minus one, multiply by minus one. You will again get one. You multiply these two. You are multiplying. Despreading means multiplying the same code, right? You multiply these two, the middle one and the bottom one. You will get the upper one, right? So provided there is no channel noise. There will not be any error. If you use the same code, you will get the message back. Otherwise, if there is some channel noise, obviously some error will be there. Channel definitely will be introduced some noise. Then we have to understand the channel. We have to observe the channel. We have to study the channel, and then we will model our system accordingly to reduce the channel, uh, to reduce the error. I hope I have answered. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is Wi-Fi spread better? No, Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is not purely spread spectrum system. In Wi-Fi, we are using some kind of uh, modulation technique called uh, orthogonal frequency uh, uh, frequency modulation technique (OFDM). So this is this is not actually a, a pure form of spread spectrum signal uh, spectrum. Uh, you know, in the sixth module, we will be discussing something about OFDM. So it's actually kind of an OFDM modulation involved in Wi-Fi. It's not a pure spread spectrum system in its raw form. Uh, thank you, sir. What is yeah. the role of pseudo noise sequence in spread spectrum? Pseudo noise sequence in spread spectrum. Pseudo noise sequence is actually a signal with lesser time duration (TC). Right. So I am multiplying my actual data signal with a signal having lesser time duration. Here, here, here it is visible. Okay. So what happens is that the product signal you are getting, or the 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 multiplied signal, no, what you so called the spread spectrum signal, you are getting is now having you know uh, a, a time period which is very small. TC. So this is how spreading is happening. So you don't know if sequences are having some properties where correlation is obviously one thing. I will you know exp explain very clear later while studying different types of noise pseudo random sequences. But in addition to that, the correlation properties it is having a time period which is very less, which is almost you know very small TC. So that lesser time period will result in a uh, which results in the broadening of the overall spectrum. So uh, sp spreading is actually because of this pseudo noise sequence, which is having a very less TC. Hope I have answered. Some more properties are there for the pseudo noise sequences that we will discuss later. We have to study that. We will discuss in the upcoming sessions. Yeah. Uh, okay, so thank you. The next two questions: How do you uh, decide the number of chips, and how does it affect the SS signal? Now, uh, I mean, so-called uh, we we have designed, uh, you know, uh, I mean, something called uh, we have we have defined something called a processing gain, right? So, what is processing gain? Processing gain is actually the the gain of uh, of of SNR. It is actually the SNR gain, right? So, uh, we have already mentioned here. Process 
processing gain is now I, I will come to that slide so yeah processing gain is actually tb by tc and what is tb by tc tb is the bit duration tc is the chip duration what is the ratio n is the number of chips all right so the number of chips is actually related to that spreading spreading uh, spreading factor or or that spreading range all right so depending upon whatever applications what we are having we can uh, select our spreading factor right whatever is uh, designed whatever is required for us whatever uh, snr gain is required for us depending upon that we can have our uh, we can design our n basically all right and you know uh, one more thing that uh, we we are again we will be discussing in the next session only uh, there are some you know uh, methods that we normally follow for the generation of these code sequences all right so uh, i should say from this point of view, whatever information i have shared today i can say that processing gain or the gain of snr of the system is somehow related to uh, i mean the number of chips that we are using all right so that depends upon the uh, system that we are uh, designing our requirements basically so i hope i have answered that question uh, yes thank you uh, yeah. consider ims pi how can i retrieve the data without the code how can you retrieve the data without the code if you don't have the code it is very difficult you are no we are not dealing with any um, I mean, security hacking type of methods but still from the basic fundamental concept of a spectrum if you don't have the code you cannot retrieve the data back if you don't have the code you cannot retrieve the data back. you can you can have any kind of so that is the reason you know why uh, why uh, the, the you know this uh, hackers or i should say the unintended users are doing some trial and error methods some brute force methods they will try all possible code sequences and somewhere they will end up with the actual code sequence otherwise if you don't have any idea about the code sequence it is absolutely very, extremely difficult it is not at all possible to get the exact data back from a jammer point of view so from a jam but jammer has many methods right jammer obviously will be trying many methods some some I mean, uh, they will be uh, trying some random methods they will try to predict our code signal some kind of we are not concerned about the methods done by the jammer but from our point of view if that person is not having if that that person is not getting the actual code no way he is not it's not possible to get your signal back from your oh. spectrum signal you need the actual code hope i have answered Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for answering all the questions. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, can you please say some important questions in spec spectrum communication exam point of view? Uh, from exam point of view, normally we uh, no uh, we might have. Uh, I mean, in the previous question papers, you have seen you you might have seen uh, one uh, important question is the block diagram of and and the explanation of a direct sequence spread spectrum. So uh, it's something like with the need the block diagram you explain a direct sequence spread spectrum system. So we have to uh, explain this particular uh, block diagram and uh, followed by its explanation. That is one thing. And the second thing, uh, second one uh, that normally asked is uh, is the definition of processing gain. So again, processing gain is yet to complete. We have a derivation for this processing gain. So sometimes you may uh, they may ask the derivation of processing gain. So you have to derive all these processing gain and all. We have today we have mentioned only the concept fundamental idea of processing gain. But obviously in the next session we will derive what is processing gain. That is required. And you know, uh, uh, I mean uh, the probability. of error so again that we will discuss in the next session only so from today's point of view uh, the fundamental concept you may have some uh, short questions like uh, i mean uh, the concept of spread spectrum then direct sequence spread spectrum which normally will be an essay question for you then uh, then uh, processing gain will be a very important aspect <laughs> some problems may come from processing gain right you may given some of the parameters and uh, they will ask what is a processing gain some problems will come so these are the important topics from this this area that we have discussed today Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Anything more to add? Yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, probably uh, I hope it is. Uh, it's almost. It's, it's almost very clear in this particular uh, session. So uh, nothing more to add. Uh, we will. We will have uh, more discussion in the upcoming. I mean, uh, sessions where uh, we will have more mathematical analysis of this. Whatever we have, you know, discussed here, we will have more mathematical analysis in the upcoming sessions. Yeah, that's all. 
Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for spending your valuable time and for your wonderful session covering the topic spread spectrum communication. You thank you so much. Thank you so much. Explained yeah. the concept and it is really informative. Hope yeah. our students will surely be benefited by this session. The students can access the whole session in SF YouTube channel. Once again, yeah. thank you, sir, and thanks to all the participants.